Broncos fans, 3-0 and is a fun conversation. 3-2 and is a different conversation when you start the year off 3-0. and But if you're not losing faith in the season, you still got hope that this Broncos team is playoff bound, then go ahead and like this video. And if you don't believe in that, just like it anyway. That way people get more Broncos content across their YouTube feeds regardless. So if you haven't already, please like this video. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. Week 5 overreactions. I like to have fun with these to a degree. Some of them are a little more truthful than others, but when it's overreaction time, all bets are off. So, first one up here. Kyle Fuller. Swing and a miss. I don't know how much of an overreaction this is, frankly. Um, the money he got and the production he's giving, the two are not correlating. And he was toasted in Pittsburgh, okay? It was like a toaster strudel gone wrong, and all the filling came out all over the field, and that's how bad it looked for Kyle Fuller at times. Letting up five completions north of 100 yards, Deontay Johnson just had opera music in between his headset, in between his uh, ears, in his helmet, because he was dancing all over Fuller en route to a touchdown. Here's what he's done so far this season. You check out the 2021 coverage season stats here for Kyle Fuller. These are what the opposing wide receivers are doing on him. Over 300 yards through five games. Gross. 64% completion percentage. Disgusting. Oh, and it's all over 16 yards and two touchdowns. Fuller is a former all-pro cornerback. He had some great seasons in Chicago, but it is not looking like the guy they brought him to be, all right? He's not the CB1, and frankly, this front Broncos front office and defense has to have a serious conversation about what Fuller's role is going to be going forward because if you keep trying the same experience, experiment over and over again, you're certified crazy, and that's the path the Broncos are going down at this moment. So, what I want to know from you guys, though, are you out on Kyle Fuller already? Type I for in, type O for out. I wish this was as good as an in and out burger, but it is not. I, I am out. What more do we have to see? It's been five games, and he hasn't played great quarterbacks. You shouldn't be burned by Ben Roethlisberger at this stage in his career. If you're making Big Ben look good, that is a bad thing for yourself, so I'm out. All right, week two, uh, five overreaction number two, bad Teddy is here. There's a couple Teddy Bridgewaters out there. There's the 2019 5-0 Teddy with the Saints filling in for Drew Brees, and then there's the Teddy last year and the Panthers that after one season they moved on from him that quickly. It's a little tough to gauge this early because, one, he's dealing with kind of a concussion to some level. I'm not in his head right now, but I can't imagine it's crystal clear and everything's hunky-dory and he's 100%. Um, but over the last couple games, all right, so let's get the stat up here, RC. We got weeks one and three stats. We Look how swaggy, look how happy he is. And then you got weeks four and five. Now, yes, week four is just one half of football, so this is not a complete picture, but it does give you at least a black and white picture, all right? The drop-off from one and three to the last six quarters, there's a noticeable difference. The completion percentage isn't there. You got your first interception this season. I mean, these aren't jarring numbers. These aren't horrible, disgusting numbers, but still... There's something to be said, and that's why it's in an overreaction video, all right? I'm not officially panicking on Bridgewater. I'm not like, oh, my God, burn it all down. I'm out. This is no longer the quarterback for the rest of the season. But it's been six quarters now, and looking at my stats here, he had 176 yards in the fourth quarter against the Steelers. That outdid quarters one through three with 112. You can't wait to the last couple of minutes in – half-ass garbage time to put numbers up and you saw the results it ended with a loss Broncos fans if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe right now here's the deal subscribe for a week six win if you don't subscribe I'm not saying the Broncos are gonna lose I hope they don't lose but I'm not not saying that if they do lose you're the reason so just don't be that guy Go ahead, subscribe. That way on Sunday your conscience is clear, and that way you get more Broncos content all season long. All right, next week five overreaction here. Start Javante Williams. Is it that much of an overreaction? Kind of, kind of not, all right? 
Fun little Colin Coward exp uh, analogy here. So the deal with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon is, do you want to bring the new car, Javante Williams, the fast, you know, your brand new shoes, um, the new guy in the block and run him into the ground? Or do you want to just do that to your pickup truck and Melvin Gordon, who I'm sorry, but when you're on your final year of your contract and you're in year six, the team's going to pound you into the ground. That's just the NFL we live in. The lifespan for running backs is just not very long. And so there's the numbers right there. A couple things I'm looking at really quickly. Look at the snap count, all right? Gordon is quietly getting more snaps. And I say quietly because when you think of good running back play and good running back, uh, some good rushes this season for the Broncos, you're thinking of Williams more than Gordon. But Gordon is still out snap counting him right now. The two are pretty even in averages. Uh, that's total yards between carries and receptions. Gordon still has the edge there. But it just feels that when Javante Williams has the ball, something more special is going to happen. All right, He breaks off tackles better. He's just overall, in my opinion, looking like the better back so far for the Broncos. So that's why maybe you give Javante Williams the start. All right, He's making defenders' lives miserable. But let's open the conversation up to you guys as well. Pick an RB1 for me. Type MG for Melvin Gordon, JW for Javante Williams. I'm going to go with Javante Williams because... You're in win-now mode if you're head coach Vic Fangio. All right? I understand the idea of Gordon's on his last year of his contract. Let's save Williams some snaps and keep his lifespan a little longer by not put, you know, just piling it on his, in his first season, just burning his knees. But also, Williams gives you better runs. That's just a fact. So that's why I'm going with Williams. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Broncos fans, make some money thanks to BetUS, all right? Last week didn't do the best, but you know what? You can't go 5-0 and every week like I did two weeks ago, but you can get 125% off when you go to BetUS. You use the link chatsports.com slash bet and the promo code Broncos125. Not only are they going to get you 125% deposit bonus, which is $100 turning into $225, but you can also get a free jersey talked about this on a previous show but if you're new to the channel or if you don't remember no biggie here's how it works all you got to do is go to chats chatsports.com slash bet promo code broncos 125 then when you sign up you put a hundred dollars in you get a hundred twenty five percent deposit bonus and then you're looking at either a von miller or bradley chubb jersey when you email us jersey at chatsports.com with your bet us account number and a screenshot of your first bet any size, any color, get one of the two top pass rushers in the NFL between Bradley Chubb and Von Miller. Look at the steps. They're right there. Take a picture of, of the screen if you have to. Just email us, jersey at chatsports.com. Once you go through those first couple steps with your BetUS account number and a screenshot of your first bet, just don't forget you have to use the link, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Broncos125. Week 5 overreaction number 4. Head coach Vic Fangio isn't the guy. This one I'm also kind of struggling to gauge of how realistic it is compared to the other ones. But it's not looking like the Broncos are. This is the overreaction part of me on the right trajectory. All right. Look at the first three seasons now for head coach Vic Fangio. 7-9. He had three different starting quarterbacks. That's a decent excuse for a first-year head coach. Seven and nine. Uh, Vance Joseph went six and ten the year before, so you improved with three different quarterbacks at one point, including Flacco, Brandon Allen, and Drew Locke. I don't know, just yelling out success to me. All right, 2020, you set back, and then there's a lot of injuries last year. You don't have Von Miller. You don't have Bryce Callahan. You had to start Kendall Hinton for crying out loud one game. Four different starting QBs. 2020, you can kind of chalk it up to that. But here we are in 2021. Started the year off 3-0. and Quickly, you picked up two losses in back-to-back -back weeks. 3-2. and You just can't afford to let this get out of control. And that's really been my big point here. Some guys are just coordinators. All right, This has kind of been a knock on Fangio for a while. Of He's a great defensive coordinator. He did great in San Francisco. Great in Chicago. But is he cut out for a head coach? I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what makes a head coach great compared to a good coordinator? Because I've never been either one of them. But I can tell you when someone is a great coordinator and it's just not translating in head coaching. All right? 
Maybe that's the case here. Maybe I'm overreacting. But if I am, if I'm not, I just want you guys to be in on the conversation. So let me know if I missed anything on today's overreaction show. If I'm way over my head on some things or if I'm forgetting something, hop down in the comments. Let me know. We'll go back and forth. Love having a two-way conversation with the best fan base in the NFL.